Welcome back to Let's Talk Forestry. We're here today in the county of Cavan to talk to Geoffrey Shaven, who has a five-year-old mixed woodland. Let's see what Geoffrey has to say about his forestry journey to date. For the past four years, I've been managing the forest myself. Um, I've been involved in the planting and the, all aspects of management of my forest. I've decided where to plant the broad leaves and all the other things, leaf nice access paths. So yes, I've been involved in all the management myself. The plant quality on the tree growth, that's a very important thing. All these trees come from non Sohadi, a registered forest of forest nursery. They do the quality control. I know they have a good reputation. I know that if I get trees from them, they are good quality. The oak in the native woodland, I know the seeds are collected in cork. Everything is iris, everything is native. So if I plant native trees, I go to a registered nursery. I know I have good quality trees. The mixture I planted, I planted 10 hectares of Sitka spruce. I've planted five hectares of native woodland. Native woodland, according to the Forest Service, at 5% holly, hazel, rowan, mountain ash, um, you name it, everything is in it. Unfortunately, this is the wrong time of the year, but in the spring, it will be full of blossom and full of bees and full of everything. The trees have grown mostly as expected. There is a little thing like I didn't foresee the frost pocket here on the bottom. This part that we're standing in, it goes all the way down. That's a really big frost pocket on the bottom there. As well, the Douglas fir that I've planted on the bottom. I didn't realize when I was planting that it's a little bit too wet for the Douglas fir and that pockets are not taking. But the rest, I'm very happy with the growth. I have massive growth on trees and I'm very happy with how everything is progressing. The forest layout, I left everywhere decent paths for access. It's easy for maintenance. I can get my quad bike in with the trailer with water for spraying with anything that I need. All the broadleaves are at the water. I did inverted mounding, scrap mounding, so that I don't disturb the soil too much. So anything at the water, the broadleaves will never be clear felt. It will always be managed on a contingent forest cover. So all the animals, all the wildlife and everything else will stay at the river and I protect the soil and the water by doing so. I did this for all the biodiversity, the amount of bees, the amount of birds. I don't know if you can hear the birds in the background and everything, but there is such an amount of wildlife in there that it's just such an enjoyment to walk through it. And it's pure for me in biodiversity. It's so nice to see the broadleaves with all the animals and everything that come. My ultimate goal in the broadleaves in 30 years, if they're nice and big and everything, I would love to see owls nesting. Just to get my ultimate biodiversity goal. But I know the Lee's Barn Owl project is running a great project at the moment. I follow them on Facebook. And it's so cute to see those barn owls with those nice faces. It's such an enjoyment to just walk here and see the wildlife and to see, hopefully in the future, the barn owls, see the red squirrels, to see the jays, see the woodpeckers, see everything else. So for work-wise, maintenance-wise, at this stage, because I'm past the four years, I just need to keep paths clear. I need to shape an or tree. I need to, but now it's only like a few days a year, but I would like to spend way more time on it because it's such an enjoyment.
insect infestations. Other than spiders between the trees and you walk through the trees and you're full of spiders, there is no insect infestations. Yes, there are bee nests and other things, but they're natural and they're part of the environment. No, I didn't have any diseases here in the trees. I had other damage, I had frost damage. As you probably can see here, there's quite a few little or smaller trees that suffered from the frost damage. And I have a little bit wind damage, especially higher up where the Douglas fir grew too quick and the root system didn't keep up and a few went down. But I replanted them with new trees so that there's no gaps and nothing else coming. If we have a frost in May, June, it will kill a good bit of the new growth. As well with the Sitka, the climate at the moment we have, the winters are not cold enough. Trees start to flush earlier. If we have a late frost in April, May, it will damage a good bit of trees and you will get bushy, badly growing trees. And maybe I should have planted other trees that are more frost resilient. There wasn't really a difficult part of the process because I had good guidance from Jared Dunn, my resident forester, the Chagas advisor. Everybody is giving you so much advice that you're never alone. I'm a member of the Northeast Forest Owners Group. There is so much information between all of us. If I don't know something, I can always ask somebody else or say, somebody show me how to do this. So there's so much help out there that there is not really a difficult thing. I am in my day job a contractor for Quilty, so I'm heavily involved in Quilty's activities too. I learn an awful lot from my activities in Quilty. Two months ago we had a whole course about water quality, about silt traps, how to avoid getting silt into the water, runoff areas, water crossings and all those things. So Quilty definitely helps me to keep up to date with everything. Also Quilty is testing all kinds of chemicals to see which one does the least harm to the bees and the least harm to the environment. And I think they're in the forefront of forestry in Ireland. So anything that I learn there, I can put in practice in my own forest. I've been involved already so many years in forestry. I've seen so many trees. So yes, I had a good idea of how things go with the forest service, with everything else. Again, I had good resident forester, Gerard Dunn. He did all my paperwork. Everything is just easy enough to be honest and everything is going as expected. It's so important to put in the work from year one, not at year four and suddenly you open the gate and go like, there's no trees, there's nothing. I've done my maintenance, I've been doing active maintenance from year one to year four so that everything gradually grew to stage four. They checked, are the trees free of vegetation? Are the trees tall enough? Are there too many dead trees? They checked the stocking, all the health and everything else of my whole forest. Um, the Forest Service approved my stage four because again, I put in the work from year one and everything is doing fine. Future management of the forest, say 30 years from now, um, the native woodland again will all be managed in CCF. I will get a bit of firewood out of it, um, but basically yeah, there's no real commercial value for me at the moment, in my opinion on it. I have a few options for the Sitka spruce. I'm not yet fully decided on what I will do in 30 years. It could well be if you come back in 30 years that this is all clear felt and I replant it with native woodland, Sitka spruce. It all depends on the timber prices, it depends on the climate, it depends on the government grants. I'm doing it to make money. So yes, if the government says from Comer of Contingent Forest Cover, we give you and it pays better than clear felt, who am I to go like, I'm not going that way. 
but yes, again, I could, I'm completely open-minded on the Sitka. It depends. The Sitka Spruce is my pension. I want to get, in, in certain states, X amount of money out of it, or at least paying my pension. So if it's clear fell, is it CCF, is it replanting with broadleaves, is it, I'm all open for that. Yes, I would definitely encourage more landowners to plant forestry. Again, I wouldn't have done it if it wouldn't have paid the bills. Instead of milking cows and being out there every day, I only have to come here once in a little while and I think it can compete with, and maybe not milk, but definitely with beef uh, farming. The advice I give the landowners that are thinking about planting the land, visit other landowners that have already planted. Walk to their forest, learn from their mistake. Get the contact. See, for example, I did scrap mounding because I got fed up of falling into drains. Quite a few people are not yet familiar with all the things that are possible in forestry. And you only get the experience by talking to other foresters who've already gone the triac before you and learn from their mistakes. Managing a young forest station, you need your pesticide spraying tickets, your PA1, PA6 for your knapsack, shaping oak and everything. Even if you just talk to a charges advisor from how to do it, show me 10 trees, you should be able to do it. Shaping Sitka, if it has double leaders, if you talk to a Chargers advisor or talk to your registered forest advisor, say listen, I need help with this, he shows 10 trees. You will be able to do most of that stuff yourself. But again, the pesticide, the herbicide, the chemical for grass control, vegetable control, that is something that a professional needs to do. How can the government help incentivize landowners to plant more land? Um, first of all, the native woodland Again, I planted the premium to run out in year 15, 20. Um, after that, I have a big gap. I do all that good for the environment. I take out all the carbon. I stimulate so much wildlife. I think the government should incentivize the native woodland with a carbon credit payment, with an eco payment or something, biodiversity payment, something like that, that we feel as landowners who have native forest with broadleaves and do all the good for the nature, get a little reward for all the effort that we've put in and give up our land for all. That's all for this month on Let's Talk Forestry. Hope you enjoyed the video. We'll be back again next month interviewing another forest owner at a different stage in our forest life cycle. Don't forget to like, comment, share and subscribe to our channel. Your support will help us make more videos in the future and allow forest owners to share their experiences on this social media platform. Thank you for watching. See you next month.